I've always been heavier than everyone else, always, whole life. I remember when I was maybe eight, yeah, eight-ish, and there's, I had two girls that I, you know, grew up around, there's the three girls, and uh, one was n normal, like, very average sized, one was quite s smaller, like, um, very slender, and then there was me. And I remember when around this age when the one that the average size girl was 70 ish, 75 pounds, and but the very slender girl was like 60, 64 pounds. I remember it was kind of crazy to me, and I was 100 pounds. And I never thought, even then, I just I was just like, I can't because we, we, you know try each other's clothes on or whatever, fun outfits, and I couldn't fit in anything, anybody else's anything. I mean, I was taller than everybody, and I was bigger than everybody, and I never really understood it, and I, and I never connected f size to food. Never. Um, I don't remember a Halloween where I didn't vomit. Any time that I had the ability to get sugar... I overate to the point where I would vomit, even as a child. Not even, only as a child. Obviously, as an adult, once you start to understand things, you start you stop doing that stuff. But I remember, again, maybe seven or eight, not even Halloween, eating so much sugar and junk food that I would vomit. That I would wake up puking in my bed because I would be so sick from having so much sugar. And again, no one said, oh, okay, maybe children shouldn't have sugar. And, and I hate saying this because I know you're going to go, she's blaming other people. She's not taking responsibility. But there really needs to be an argument out there like, of course the responsibility of parents and how much and 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 maybe there's this natural shut off for people and I just don't have it and that's maybe what obese people don't have is that natural shut off to say hey you know learn from this don't do this and you would think that I would learn but I never put two and two together I really never did and I've been called ditzy my whole life I'm very smart but ditzy is what everyone always tells me I can figure anything out from a book but some of the most obvious stuff just so I I just never figured out I just thought I was getting sick you know I just thought I never put it together I remember several times where I would have like almost a meltdown because I was so hungry and I was with other people like family or friends like distant family or whatever and they would just be so blown away by how I would snap and I would freak out about needing food and I think what I've read on the internet is it's called hangry. <laughs> And, and I mean, this is 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, I mean, and I reached this weight before hitting adulthood, and then I've maintained this weight. I mean, I've gone up and down, definitely tried different diets, and definitely have had uh, surpluses of exercise and, and then slower periods of exercise. I mean, I've been going to the gym for six or seven years now. Not like, like three to five days a week. Usually five days a week, some days a week, so it's less. Um, and I, it's just, they make all these arguments about fat acceptance and, I never would have considered that a real a real thing. Um, and I think the most interesting thing about fat acceptance and no body shame is that people have come out of the woodworks to object it. And 
their arguments are relatively valid most of the time. Um, and they're saying things that, like, your family and friends don't tell you. Um, your your mother's not going to set you aside and say, you have, a, you have a problem, I didn't teach you how to eat correctly, you should be eating real meals, you should be eating vegetables. Um, I know you haven't, you, you think you eat vegetables and you haven't had a vegetable in a year, you know, obviously there's a problem, you know, your parents aren't going to sit you down, they're not going to, definitely not going to take blame for ta teaching you wrong. And in most cases, they're going to have their own problems of not knowing how to eat either. Um, you just can't let that get passed down to you. And the, this decade or of knowledge out there where there's all these people, you got to listen. You got to learn. You got to take scientific arguments and solid arguments and figure things out. But you you need to, you can't sit in denial. You got you to gotta definitely come to an acceptance of the truth. And I, and I hate saying all that stuff of you know about food and youth, but because it's almost like passing the buck. But that's something that fat acceptance and anti-fat acceptance and never really acknowledges is the path that got people overweight from childhood, and they always say it's your fault. You're an adult. Figure it out. Fix it. But someone who's not who's average weight only has to maintain. They don't have to lose. But if you do listen to someone who has lost, they're usually very against obese people. They usually are very vocal. Um, the most vocal anti-fat acceptance people are usually people who have lost weight and said, hey, I did all the work. You can too. I know it's possible. And those are the people they hate for sure. People that have been to the dark side and back. That's one thing that we never talk about is the link from childhood obesity to adult obesity. And how to combat that. No one ever talks about it. They never say, take it from the person's perspective. They say fat children are the parents' fault and the child's fault. And fat adults are the person's fault. But Maintaining and losing are not the same thing. Your body does not want to lose weight. It wants to fight you. It says you're wrong. Don't lose weight. Anyways, if you like this video, click like, subscribe. Don't normally have these kind of weird conversations. I apologize.